let's talk now about pressure in the ocean. And pressure in the ocean is called hydrostatic pressure, which is the weight of a fluid like air or water. Remember, air is a fluid, fluid as well. The, the weight of that fluid pressing down on an object. For example, atmospheric pressure is simply the hydrostatic pressure of air, of the atmosphere above us, pushing down on our bodies. It turns out to be about 14.7 pounds per square inch. It acts in all directions. So if you are immersed in a mile high column of air, which you normally are, it's pushing on all parts of your body, both from the inside and the outside. You know those days you just feel so heavy and it's like, oh, the weight of the universe is upon me. It might feel like atmospheric pressure is higher, but if this property of pressure, if it wasn't pushing out as much as it's pushing in, then you would actually just implode. Okay, you've probably seen pictures of that in a science fiction movie or something like that. But that 14.7 pounds per square inch on every inch of your body, and I encourage you to measure every inch of your body and figure out how much that is, it's also pushing outwards. Again, we'd be crushed the size of a little person if that pressure wasn't pushing out in the same way that it's pushing in. Aren't you glad it is? But I know that some days when you feel like the weight of the world is upon you, you might want to blame it on atmospheric pressure and just say, I don't feel like pushing out today. Okay, atmospheric pressure and hydrostatic pressure. Of course, hydrostatic pressure or this pressure in the water also depends on how dense the fluid is. So obviously a mile of air isn't going to have the same amount of pressure as a mile of water. And we'll see that in just a few minutes. For every really 33 feet, for every 10 meters that a diver or a swimmer or any organism or anything descends in the water, Every 33 feet, we add one atmosphere of pressure. So thinking about a mile high column of air, doing the 14.7 pounds per square inch, 10 meters, 33 feet of water is the same amount of pressure. So therein is the difference between the density of air and the density of water. Air is about 800 times less dense than water. And so 33 feet of water puts another atmosphere of pressure on you. So you're really at 29.4 pounds per square inch when you're 33 feet underwater. For every 10 meters or every 33 feet, you're adding 27.4 pounds per square inch. Okay, and this is wrong here actually because at 100 feet, you've got the one atmosphere of pressure from the atmosphere as well as 33 feet, 33 feet, 33 feet. So this really should be four times 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch. I think I got that math wrong. Okay, in any case, water pressure becomes extremely intense as you go down to the bottom of the ocean. We also define this property called buoyancy, and it's really the place that a parcel of water or even something like a hot air balloon uh, maintains within that column of fluid. It really refers to the difference in forces that are trying to push this thing upwards and the pressure of the water or air above it. So if you think about a balloon, it has a certain tendency to want to rise, but it also has water or air pushing down upon it. So buoyancy is simply the difference in the upwards forces and the downwards forces and as a result positive buoyancy right here means that the upward forces are greater and so with positive buoyancy an object's going to rise. Negative buoyancy such as throwing weights around your ankles and jumping in a pool or jumping in the ocean negative buoyancy means that the downward forces are greater and you're going to sink. And when you're perfectly balanced, whether it's a hot air balloon in the air or whether it's a diver who's perfectly balanced his buoyancy compensator so that they're neither rising or sinking, 
That's called neutrally buoyant. So review this. Downward forces exceed the buoyant forces, something's going to sink. It's negatively buoyant. When the buoyant forces are greater than the downwards one, then it's positively buoyant. And when they're equal, that thing is neutrally buoyant. One of the difficult things to understand or perhaps visualize, but an important thing to understand and visualize is that water can be positively or negatively or neutrally buoyant. And this is really key to understanding how the ocean layers itself out. Not only the ocean, but lakes as well. If you think about a lake swimming in a lake in the summer, it's nice and warm and toasty up in the surface waters and you dive down and woo, it's freezing cold at the bottom. Well, that cold water is more dense, it's negatively buoyant, and it sinks to the bottom of the lake. Warmer water, on the other hand, rises and stays at the top. When you heat air, you're giving that air positive buoyancy, and it's rising. And in fact, it's that principle, the heating of air, that led to the hot air balloon. Go figure. Temperature and salinity because they affect the density of seawater, affect its buoyancy. So negatively buoyant parcels of water will sink. And we really want to get this in our minds because when we start talking about ocean circulation, when we start talking about phytoplankton and productivity in the ocean, when we start talking about marine organisms and their habitats, when we start talking about fisheries, when we start talking about the seasonal cycle in the world ocean, these principles become really important. So let's pay attention or read it carefully. If temperature and salinity cause water to become more dense, it's going to become negatively buoyant and it's going to sink. If we change temperature and salinity in a way that makes the density become less, less dense water, then that parcel of water is going to rise. It's this layering out and this rising and sinking of negatively or excuse me positively or negatively layers of water that really decide what the ocean looks like what the physical environment of the ocean is like so if we have a water column in which we have less dense a little more dense most dense if it's if the waters are ranged from least dense to most dense that's very stable, okay? Because those water layers don't need to sink. They're all at neutral buoyancy and they're creating a stable water column. However, if we have a cold layer of water on top of a warmer layer of water or a dense layer of water on top of a less dense layer of water, the more dense one is gonna sink or the colder water is gonna sink. That's an unstable water column. And those definitions are written right here. A stable water column, one where all layers are neutrally buoyant and where none of them are rising or sinking and an unstable water column where we have the water moving and mixing and rearranging itself according to its buoyancy which is actually due to its particular density which is determined by its temperature and salinity. Got it?